It seems to be a much busier than usual transition for presidents, but is it? Peter Russell would know. The Warner Endowed Professor in the Department of Mass Communication at Sam Houston State University, he served under President Reagan as Special Assistant and Deputy Press Secretary and Staff Assistant to President Ford and was Press Secretary to then Congressman George H.W. Bush. Good morning. Good morning, Professor. Cameron. Good to see you. Likewise, great to see you. I know you've been watching this with interest between your own personal interest and for what you have to talk to your students about. This transition seems to be a little bit more busy than others, but is it actually? Uh, let me tell you about transitions and inaugurations. To me, it's like stepping into a flying airplane. Uh, the, the amount of work you have to do in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. Consider this fact. A president wins an election on a Tuesday night. The next morning you think, oh, gee, I can relax a little bit. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. you got to right away get ready for an inaugural and a transition. And that's a lot of work compressed into about a two-month period. So this particular uh, transition team in terms of what's going on, have they been doing it about right from your estimation? Well, I'm a guy sitting in Houston, Texas, watching it from afar this time. But having been there, to me, I think there are four, four key elements in the transition. The first one is the job aspect, filling all the key appointed positions, which we're seeing the, the Senate go through the confirmation hearings now. Mm -hmm. Second, there's the inaugural itself, which is a tremendous amount of planning with people coming in from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Third, there's a key part of that, that inaugural, which is the inaugural acceptance speech. And think of the impact that those speeches have had down through the years. To this day, we right. talk about John F. Kennedy's right. inaugural speech. And lastly, just when you think that's all done and you're ready to move on, you got the State of the Union coming up. So, so it's a very compressed amount of work in a very compressed amount of time. So when you do that, this incoming administration, what, what are the biggest challenges for the incoming administration in order for them to put it on and make it a successful inauguration, basically several days and transition? Well, look, look what this administration, incoming administration has facing it. Iran, Iraq, uh, Syria, Afghanistan, Russia, China, uh, Cuba, uh, uh, the, the economy, the budget, the deficit, immigration, jobs, unemployment. That's a pretty solid laundry list. Now, incoming President Donald Trump isn't going to be able to address those through theater or through uh, charisma. It's going to be, it's, it's time for reality. And I think he's at that crisis. Crossroads are about to come to it where popular celebrity meets programmatic reality. Mm -hmm. uh, and now if the economy stays good, if, if, if unemployment stays down, if the cost of living uh, levels off, uh, he'll, he'll be able to stay ahead of his critics. Mm -hmm. But he's got a lot facing him. When you go from outside to inside, Talk about the change in total attitude. You just mentioned all those things that we don't think about because we're taking, looking at the theater part of it at this point. But behind the scenes, there's so much going on. The president himself really has to make a somber transition, does he not? Well, it's, it's life changing for anybody. And, and consider if you're a, a president, your life's never going to be the same again, even after you leave office. Mm -hmm. You know, the best summation of all this for me was President Reagan toward the end of his administration. One day we were talking with him and he said, you know what I'd really like to do right now? And we said, what? He said, I'd like to go outside, walk down the street to the drugstore, go in there and read the magazines on the magazine rack. He said, but I'll never be able to do that again in my life. Whereas y'all, you, you people in here right now, you can do that for the rest of your life. And what he was saying was, you'd never be alone again mm -hmm. in his life. And that's how your life changes. And that's how Donald Trump's life will change on January 20th. Well, Donald Trump's been in the spotlight for a long time. I don't know that he would ever even want to be alone. I mean, his, his aura seems to indicate that he likes the attention and that's the way he wants to be. So that part, I guess maybe he'll be able to adjust. Let's talk about transitions as they've happened through the ages. Which one, is there any one in particular that kind of stands out for you and in, in your memory that kind of sticks out and for what reason? Well, for me, that's an easy one. That would be President Reagan's second inaugural in 1984. And why? Because the temperature in Washington was seven degrees. Uh, now, you start planning an inaugural when it's seven degrees, knowing there's going to be outdoor events, including the swearing in. Uh, and that you've got a big problem confronting you. In fact, it got so bad that year, it got so cold that midway into the planning, uh, the order was given to move everything inside. Midway through? Yes. Okay. It, the planning had already begun and it was moved to all the events 
were moved inside, including uh, his inaugural speech and, 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 and the swearing in, which was in the rotunda of the Capitol. And I can tell you, it was so cold, you could, it was hard to get around, and you went to pour ga get gas, you couldn't get any gas in your car because the pumps were frozen. So yes, and I think I'm correct in saying that's the, co the coldest January inaugural in history. We, want, we talk about the inauguration, we talk about the transition, all those kinds of things. What do you tell your students about what's been going on now? I mean, this is certainly unusual in that we have someone who's totally out of politics who now is the incoming president of the United States. What kinds of things are you telling your students about what they may or may not be able to expect in this income administration? Well, what I tell them, first of all, I try to encourage their interest and participation in the political process, whatever your views may be, uh, because I think it's essential that our young people uh, be involved in the process because it's their future that's ahead of them. Uh, so I, I, I put a lot of emphasis on that. I also encourage those that are interested maybe in a government or a political career, absolutely get involved, but do it now. Do it while you're young and you got a lot of energy. Uh, so my suggestion to anybody on that is if you want to work in Washington, if you want to follow a career there that was somewhat like mine, my advice is get a good pair of Adidas tennis shoes or Nikes or whoever. I don't want to give any a plug here, but just get some tennis shoes, <laughs> yeah, and don't walk, run to Washington and do it now because you're going to need every bit of that energy. Well, I thank you for coming in this morning, and I thank you for your service to this country as well. We talk about the men you serve with, but you gave service to this country as well, and thank you for that, Peter. An honor and a pleasure, Camarillo. Thank you, Professor. Uh, by the way, a reminder, KPRC is going to have full coverage of the inaugural events. Dominic Soxa, Keith Garvin will be in Washington, D.C. You can look for their live report starting Wednesday night and continuing through the inauguration, make plans to be there as we celebrate the swearing in of the 45th president of the United States.